اشد اللہ الہ الا اللہ وحدہ لا شریک له و اشد ان محمد عبده و رسوله اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم قال اللہ تعالی فی القران الحکیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم وزل جہیم سو ارت وزل جنات و ازلفت علمت نفس ما احضرت صدق اللہ العظیم and the verses that three short verses i have recited there translate as follows and when hell is kindled and when the garden when the jannah is brought near every soul will know what it has prepared what it has prepared for itself chapter 81 verses 12 to 14 and later on in the same chapter at towards the end are the following verses wa ma sahibukum bi majnun wa laqad rahu rahu bil ufqil mubin wa ma huwa lil ghaib bi zinin wa ma huwa bi qawl shaitan rajim ہوئی nor is this the word of an accursed devil where then are you going this is nothing but a reminder for the nations for whomever among you wishes to go on the right path and you will not have that wish unless allah pleases who is the lord of the worlds so chapter 81 verses 22 to 29 In my khutbah of 2 weeks ago I read out verses 1 to 11 of this same chapter of the Holy Quran chapter 81 surah at-takwir which refer to the signs that will be seen at a time in the future I mentioned that generally those happenings are considered as taking place on the day of judgment but i showed how we can apply those verses to the modern developments in the world which have been going on since the last 200 years and are still continuing at full pace and if i repeat them in summary those signs mentioned in this chapter were at the beginning of this chapter were the passing away of mountains camels becoming redundant the animal camel that is becoming redundant wild animals being gathered together cities swelling in size which some some people translate as the seas rising then people being united like one to one the abolition of the cruel custom of killing female babies at birth the spread of books and of sources of acquiring knowledge and human beings learning the secrets of heaven and traveling into space beyond the earth so these were the signs that i mentioned from verses 1 to 11 of this chapter and just now i've recited first of all the next two verses which come after the mention of these signs and the these verses are and when hell is kindled and when the garden is brought near what is state what is stated here about hell and heaven that is what has led people to think that the happenings mentioned in the earlier verses will take place on the day of judgment because after mentioning all those signs it is immediately said that hell and heaven will both be ready to receive people but it does not necessarily mean the day of judgment 
even this coming of hell and heaven in front of us can be applied to our modern life. The heaven of worldly comforts has certainly come before us. The Holy Quran somewhere else tells us about the garden of heaven, the real garden of heaven after death. It says that the righteous in it will have fruits and whatever they desire. Now, as regards the physical human desires and needs, we can say with justification that people living in the developed countries certainly have all that they desire. Of course, it is not literally true that they have all that they desire, but we can say it with a great deal of justification. Now, food and shelter are basic human needs. In terms of food, we no longer worry about whether, whether we will get food in the first place. What we worry about is which brand of food to buy, which of the many kinds of food available will be good for us, and whether to have English, Chinese, Indian, Japanese, Korean, or other cuisine. In terms of shelter, we have homes providing us with protection from the weather, with means of heating and cooling available as necessary according to whatever the weather is. And it's very hot at the moment, as you know, here in the UK. What we worry about as regards our homes is not whether we will have any shelter, but which type of design, which which type and design of doors and windows to have in our house and what color of paint to decorate with. So these are only the most basic examples of the heaven in which we find ourselves in this world due to discoveries made by the increase in human knowledge. So that was heaven before us. As to hell, Humans also use their scientific discoveries for developing more and more powerful weapons of war. Even before nuclear weapons were invented, when the First World War took place from 1914 to 1918, the powerful weapons used for bombardment on the battlefield, which had been invented up to that time, they created a hell on earth for the soldiers in the trenches. During the Second World War also, although nuclear weapons did not exist till right at the end of that war, but the bombing of cities by conventional bombs and bombers of air forces, they brought hell right inside people's homes when the atomic bomb was used on two cities in Japan to bring the Second World War to an end, it could really, it could deservedly be called hell on earth, given the enormous amount of heat and burning generated. And from that time onwards, politicians and scientists realized that with the spread of these weapons, the world could be completely destroyed if these were used by countries against one another. And since that first time that nuclear weapons were used, this potential and capacity for worldwide destruction has fully come into existence. Never before in human history, earlier than the end of the Second World War in 1945, never before that time, was the prospect of the complete destruction of the world present right before every human's eyes. Of course, even in past and ancient times, long before there were modern weapons, there was a possibility which people feared of widespread destruction in the world by earthquakes, flood, other disasters, maybe the earth being hit by some mutant meteor coming from space. But firstly, 
that possibility in those days in people's minds was not of the utter destruction of the whole world but only parts of it and secondly that possibility of destruction was rather vague and unclear and it was just based on human imagination as to what could happen but that same possibility of destruction is now before our eyes like a stark reality and we can envision it in detail as to how it may unfold and engulf the whole world so we may say that the same spread of books and knowledge and the learning of the secrets of how the heavens work the same spread which has brought us paradise on earth for our physical well-being the same has also brought into our view right before us a complete hell now leaving it at that point i now move on to the second set of verses that i recited from the same chapter which occurred at the end of that chapter chapter 81 of the holy quran surah at takwir the first two of those verses are and your companion is not mad he truly saw himself on the clear horizon now by your companion is meant the holy prophet muhammad and it's his audience who's being addressed people who hadn't accepted him they are being addressed your companion is not mad now when this chapter was revealed and it conveyed those prophecies which i've dealt with in my khutbah two weeks ago and which i summarized today at that time people must have thought that it was madness to say that such things could happen they could neither imagining they could neither imagine them happening in this world nor in the here after so what this verse declares is that the holy prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is not a madman the people listening to the holy quran are reminded that he is their companion he is in their company all the time they know him in and out he is not some remote figure living far from them so they would definitely know if he was actually mad and the next words and truly he saw himself on the clear horizon these indicate that his message and his name would spread as far as you can see the teachings he is bringing are permanent and stable so that they will spread all over the world and he himself has been shown that this would happen he truly he saw himself on the clear horizon and that spread of his message will take place universally when when and at the time the signs given at the beginning of the chapter are clearly fulfilled in the world the signs such as when the mountains are made to pass away and when the camels are abandoned etc when the books are spread when you see those signs fulfilled then the holy prophet will be seen on the clear horizon all over the world and the next verse is <clears throat> nor is he stingy or you could say miserly with knowledge of the unseen and this again refers to the prophecies given at the beginning of this chapter and th- this verse means that he the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is giving out these prophecies in abundance a lot of them and relating to matters which are yet unseen he is not withholding any of these grand prophecies revealed to him perhaps thinking that he will not be believed but he will be mocked so he is not withholding anything and then <clears throat> the next verse is nor is it the word of an accursed devil which in arabic is 
وما هو بقول شیطان الرجیم In our own times some 30 years ago a book entitled The Satanic Verses was published was published and it caused a great international controversies The book was based on a baseless story that certain verses revealed to the holy prophet had been inspired by the devil and further that Allah later on cancelled them and removed them from the holy prophet's revelation this was the baseless story on which this book the satanic verses was based however the holy quran had declared in this chapter revealed in the earliest days of the holy prophet's mission that nothing in the quran is a word from the devil from the satan nothing in it is a satanic verse now perhaps muslims who objected to this book would have been more successful if instead of protesting against the book instead of calling for the killing of the author instead of that if they had announced to the world that the holy quran has already informed us 1400 years ago that it would get called that the holy prophet's revelation would get called the word of the devil and muslims could have pointed out that the holy quran has already answered this allegation at that time so this is not something new that a clever author thinks that he is writing in book form as a novel and presenting it to the world the holy quran thought it that book and that author 1400 years ago the next verses of this chapter are where then are you going this is nothing but a reminder for the nations so what this means is you cannot now go elsewhere because this is the book from which people everywhere will henceforth find guidance now remember that this revelation came at the very start of the holy prophet muhammad's mission when he had hardly any followers he was not known anywhere outside his own town and as regards the holy quran it was not a book only very little of it had been revealed just a few verses so the holy prophet did not have with him at that point a book which he could present to people and say this is a reminder for all the nations of the world so this again is a grand prophecy that the holy quran would first become a book and then it would reach all nations and this prophecy has been made at the end of that same short chapter where at the beginning it sets out those signs which i i have been discussing and those signs which as i mentioned have been fulfilled by developments in the modern world so this means that when we see those signs such as the camels being abandoned as a form of transport books being spread the heaven having its secrets uncovered unveiled and removed then we should know that this is the time when the holy quran will reach all the nations of the world Now, after saying that the Quran is a reminder for the nations, in Hawaila Zikrulil Alamin, the chapter closes with verses twenty-eight and twenty-nine, which say, "And it is a reminder for whomever among you wishes to go straight, whoever among you wishes to follow the right path, and you will not have such a wish unless Allah please, unless Allah wills, who is the Lord of the worlds." Now the first verse here explains what is meant by the Quran being a reminder that 
its teachings lead to the straight path to God. And that path is open through the Quran to anyone who wishes to follow it. For whomever, whoever, whomever among you who wishes to go straight. But what about this next and last verse of this chapter? That you will not have such a wish unless Allah pleases who is the Lord of the worlds. Many people, in fact most people, wrongly believe that this last verse means that in case of some people, Allah has willed and ordained and predestined that they do not, that should, they should not have the wish to follow the right path. He settled it about them. But there are a number of other interpretations of this verse which make more sense. But I would like to point out that the first verse is in the singular tense talking about one person, the one which says, whomever among you wishes to go straight. That is in the singular, Leman Shah Minkum Ayyastakim. That is all in the singular tense. But the second verse is in the plural. And you will not have such a wish. That is in the plural. It is not about one person. So what we can take this last verse as meaning is that the spread of Islam on a wide scale, you see it says, and you, a lot of people, will not wish until Allah pleases, who is the Lord of the worlds. We can take that as meaning that the spread of Islam on a wide scale in the world will only happen in accordance with the will of Allah when he brings about those circumstances and those signs that are prophesied in the beginning of this chapter. Those signs about the books being spread and the camels being abandoned and the... Uh, uh, <coughs> the mountains being leveled or removed when those are fulfilled. That will be the time for the widespread spreading of Islam in the world at the time of Allah's pleasing. So I hope I did make that last point clear and if I didn't then I'm willing to explain it further to anyone who wishes to ask. So may Allah grant us to continue with this mission of making the Holy Quran and its teachings available on a wide scale to the whole world that it may become uh, as it says uh, that uh, it may become a zikr to all the nations zikr lil alameen something which everyone in the world reads and no one wants to burn as unfortunately some people, misguided people do. Amin. Barakallahu lana wa lakum fil Quran al-Azim wa nafakna wa yakum bil ayat wa zikr al-Hakim inna hu ta'ala jiwadun kareemun malikun bararur rufur rahim